Hello programmers. In this video, we'll be building the Pawn game in Python using the Pygame module. You must have already known how this game works. There would be two paddles where each paddle is used to push the ball to the other side and when any of the players fail to do that, the other player gets the point. Let's get started with the code. As usual, the first step would be to import the required Python module. In this case, we are going to import Pygame and Random. In the next step, we'll initialize Pygame and define the game screen. Then, we'll write the infinite loop to keep the game screen open until we exit the window. If we run this program, we'll be able to see the blank screen. Yes, it is working. We'll exit the window by pressing Alt F4. Now, we'll set up the background for the game. Let me define a background color to fill the screen with it and a prop color for the other things on the screen. We'll fill the screen with the background color and draw a line in the middle of the screen by using pygame.draw.aaline function. The first argument would be the screen, then the prop color, and then the xy coordinates of the two endpoints of that line. We'll also draw a big circle in the center of the screen using gfx.aacircle function. The arguments would be the screen, the xy coordinates of the center of the circle, the radius of the circle, and the prop color. We'll add the line pygame.display.update in order to update the screen at every iteration of the while loop. Let us run this program. We can see the game set up here with the background color, the line in the middle, and the circle in the center of the screen. Just to remind you of the coordinate system in Pygame, the top left corner of the screen is the origin. The x-axis is in the horizontal direction and the y-axis is in the vertical direction. Therefore, the points on x-axis range from 0 to the width of the screen and the points on y-axis range from 0 to the height of the screen. With this, you must be able to figure out how I came up with the coordinates of the end points of the line and the center of the circle. Now, we will place the ball and the paddles on the screen. Let us define the radius of the ball and the dimensions of the paddles. I want to place the ball in the center of the screen and the paddles at the ends. To do so, we have to specify the coordinates of the top left corner of this figure. We can come up with these coordinates by doing the math. Now, we will define the rectangles. The first two arguments would be the xy coordinates of the top left corner and the next two arguments would be the dimensions of the rectangle. The same goes with the other rectangles also. In the next step, we'll display these figures on the screen. We display the paddles using pygame.draw.rect function, where the arguments would be the screen, the prop color, and the rectangle. Then, we'll display the ball by using circle function. The arguments to this function would be the screen, the xy coordinates of the center of the rectangle that we have defined for the ball, the ball radius, and the prop color. Let's run this program. Here, we can see the paddles and the ball placed in their respective positions. Now, in the next step, we'll define the movements of the ball. We'll define two variables that represent the speed of the ball along the x and y axis. Then, we'll update the position of the ball by adding them to the x, y coordinates of the ball. This means that the ball will move 5 units forward along the x axis and 5 units forward along the y axis. Let us run this program. We can see that the ball has moved forward along the x, y axis, but it was really fast. It is actually the speed of the while loop. Let us slow this down by defining a clock variable by initializing the class pygame.time.clock. Then we'll add clock.tick function, which takes the frame rate as an argument. You can experiment with different values to determine the speed of the ball. Now you can see that the ball has slowed down a bit. In the next step, we'll restrict the movement of the ball within the game screen. We'll write the conditions ball.top less than or equal 0 and ball.bottom greater than or equal screen height. Here, ball.top is the y coordinate of the top edge of the ball and the ball.bottom is the y coordinate of the bottom edge of the ball. These conditions become true when the ball hits the top or the bottom of the game screen. 
When this happens, the ball has to change its direction with respect to y-axis. Therefore, the sign of the speed of the ball along the y-axis is changed. It is the same case for the left and right ends of the screen. If the ball hits the left or right ends of the game screen, the sign of the speed of the ball along the x-axis is changed. Here, you can see the change in the direction of the ball where it hits any of the ends. We need to add a similar case when the ball collides with the paddles. We write the condition ball.colliderect of player 1 and ball.colliderect of player 2. These conditions become true when the ball collides with any of the paddles. When this happens, we have to change the sign of the speed of the ball along the x-axis. Now, we'll define the movements of the paddles. We'll take a variable that defines the speed of the paddle and two more variables that will be used during the movement of the paddle. We have to move the paddles in response to the keyboard event. The paddles can only move upwards or downwards. We'll define the keys W and S to control player 1 and the arrow keys to control player 2. We'll write the condition event.type equals pygame.keydown. As long as the keys are pressed, the paddles should move. If the key is S, then we have to move player 1 downwards, that is, along the direction of y-axis. Therefore, we will assign player speed to player 1 delta. If the key is W, then we have to move player 1 upwards, that is, along the direction of negative y-axis. Therefore, We'll assign a minus of player speed to player 1 delta. We'll update the y coordinate of player 1 with player 1 delta. Similarly, we'll write the conditions for player 2. And update the y coordinate of player 2. These are the cases where the key is pressed. But when a pressed key is released, the movement of the paddle has to stop. That is, the value of the player delta should be made 0. We write the condition event.type equals pygame.keyup. If the keys W or S are released, then the player 1 delta should be made 0. And if the arrow keys are released, then the player 2 delta should be made 0. This should stop the movement of the paddles. Let us run this program. I am able to move the paddles by pressing the keys. But we can see that the paddles are able to move out of the game screen. We have to restrict their movement within the game screen. We will update player1.talk to max of 0 and player1.talk and player2.talk to max of 0 and player2.talk. Similarly, we will update player1.bottom to minimum of screen height and player1.bottom and player2.bottom to minimum of screen height and player2.bottom. Now, I am able to restrict the movements of the paddles within the game screen. Now that the movements of the ball and the paddles are working well, let us define the win-lose condition. A player wins when the other player misses the ball. That is, when the ball hits the left or right end of the game screen, a player wins. We have already defined this condition here. Let us comment this code and restart the game instead. To restart the game, we need to bring back the ball to the center of the screen and randomly define the direction of the ball. To do this, the speeds of the ball along the x and y axis have to be randomly assigned a positive or a negative sign. This is done by using random.choice function. Let us run this program. We can see that the game is restarted with the ball at the center of the screen moving in a random direction. With this, the core logic of the game is complete. Now let us add a scoreboard for each of these players. We will define two variables representing the scores of each player. If the ball hits the left end, then player 2 should get the point. 
and if the ball hits the right end then the player 1 should get the point now we'll define a font by using pygame.font.sysfont which takes in the font style and the font size as arguments we'll define the message that needs to be displayed on the screen by using the font.render function we'll write the message to display the score of player 1 and provide the prop color then we'll update the dimensions of the text box by getting the rectangle that is associated with it and updating its center then we'll display the message on the screen by using screen.glick function it is the same in case of player 2 We'll run this program one final time. We have the ball, the paddles, the scoreboard, and the whole game which is complete. Please check out the code for this game in the GitHub repo that is provided in the description. And please don't forget to hit a like and subscribe to this channel.